my co-director lived there. They have about 3,000 people. They put out about a half a million gallons into their sewage system. They have EPA violations. I just use that as a, what I'm calling armchair engineering, just exactly like Keller did. I don't think you can decide how to do something with armchair engineering. You can't sit around and not get real specific about the numbers. I know how they added their numbers up. They took the number of gallons that we create in a year and tried to put it on the land. That's not the issue. That's like Mike said, somebody has a horse in a race. All I'm saying is I'm on the side of the people. I'm trying to get the best decision made here. There's a lot of information that you need to have to make any sort of a decision. Now, the best thing I can say, <laughs> we have found funding sources to help us do this project. So the answer to what I'm saying is maybe we work a deal some of the year we need to put the water in the river. During the summer, we certainly don't have to. There's more demand for water than we can create. The water that flows between October and March is about a million gallons a year. A, a month, a, a day, I'm sorry. That's, you know, Rigby has half that water and EPA violations. So the answer is get out from under EPA, put the water somewhere else. We can get funding to do that. I think that makes sense. And like I say, I just think that in Rigby they wish Mike Overacker lived there. You'll remember during our workshop that we had trouble coming up with the land. You'll remember that we had trouble coming up with a farmer who might understand the use of it. There he is. But he doesn't have enough land. That's exactly what I'm saying. Keller counted, and I don't count it that way. I'll be happy to sit with you and Keller, and we'll count those numbers again. I'm saying you can't make these kind of decisions that bring up the issues that Jim Sestere brought up without getting real specific and doing the best thing for the people. That's what I'm asking you to do. First of all, Kevin, let me say something real quick. Uh, first of all, just with this rate increase, we, that is not a decision that we're, we're going to a mechanical plant. Uh, Mike's place is, is not ruled out. What we're addressing right off the bat is the inflow infiltration into our system. We're trying to see how we're going to, what our, what our uh, output's going to be after correcting that. We have to dredge the ponds. We still, like Mike says, we have a window there of opportunity to work with him. And if the numbers or, uh, or if we can get grants or what have you, in other words, we still got two years or so to think about doing that. You know, by, by passing this this increase, it, all it's doing is allowing us to cash flow our projects, our prioritized projects that we need to do to show EPA that we are addressing our issues. And uh, and then, you know, we can still work on this if it's going to be cost effective and feasible. So this is not a decision uh, stating that uh, we're going to go to a mechanical plant or that we're going to... Uh, work with Mike on seeing what we can do there. That decision has not been made yet. We're just addressing the problems we already know exist by the study we had done with Kelly. That's what we're trying to do right now. That's what we're doing. And we want to cash flow it so we don't have to take out a six, eight million dollar loan and pay two, three million dollars in interest. Uh, for, look, let me give you an example. Yeah, and we would have to raise our rates to $42 to qualify for uh, these loans. For example, in 1990, the city of Salmon took out a $1 million bond for a new water treatment plant, right? Well, this is 2010, 20 years ago. We still owe $800,000 on that $1 million, and the building's not even there anymore. So what we want to do is cash flow this, we don't want to have to take out a loan for 30 years and then somewhere in between the 30 years while we're trying to pay off, let's say, a new mechanical plant, then they change the regulations again. And then here we got to do something else to our sewage plant and we still owe $8 million. We, we, we want to get around. I think what you're, you're thinking because we're passing this, this rate increase that we are making a decision on exactly what we're going to do in the future. And that's 
not what this is about. This is addressing our I and I dredging. Uh, we have other work on Hope and Shoop Street. We know we have infiltration there. This is what we're addressing first. And we're trying to cash flow it and have DEQ and EPA to work with us. And we don't have to take out a loan. And we don't have to waste two or three million dollars in interest. So, Mike, this is actually still open. I, I, I don't know, for us, we've got time. We've got a couple of years to, to, to think all this out. I'm still concerned about the people built brand new $300,000 houses all around what's already been subdivided and the new subdivisions going in. You think Ziegler's going to sell a whole lot of property if he's got a 100 acre holding pond there? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm concerned about those people also. So I got to try to think about everybody, you know. But this is not a decision about whether to proceed on the wetlands and the holding pond or to go McKenna. Thanks for explaining that. This is that's, not that's, I assume that was the case. What I'm saying is, it is a serious issue. We can get out from it under EPA. We really can't, and, and they don't have any infiltration problems. You know, so I'm saying. You know, uh, I don't think well, we're getting rippy as geographically uh, constrained like we are with the mountains and the rivers and private ranchers. So well, I think, isn't there infiltration I, I, I think they have a lot more open land, maybe. Than we do. All I'm saying is they have EPA violations. I know, like but this, too. <laughs> this ordinance is not a decision not about awesome. what we're going to do in the future. We're just addressing our I and I. That's what we want to address. We've got to send an EPA letter tomorrow. Uh, uh, George got put out RFPs uh, for the work that we need to get done this summer on relining the main line going out to the lagoons on 93, and we're we're stymied right now. We don't know what we're going to do tomorrow unless this passes tonight, you know. So, uh, you know, and I don't know. E EPA, they're, they're like the IRS. They'll take the last dollar out of your wallet. Yeah. They don't care. You're convincing me. <laughs> <laughs> but, Cal, we have approximately two years to study all alternatives. The two years you're talking about is when the next EPA, now until when the next EPA is up. permit yeah. comes up. Right, but if we're, we're, not, we're not even getting there. We but if we you can this start st you're studying it now. So we just continue study. If we cut back, if, if, if cut we cut back 30% on the inflow, maybe we'll meet the discharge requirements. And with this rate increase in effect, you know, we could build up our cash reserve and maybe do something with Mike or go mechanical. We don't know yet. But that's not what this ordinance is about. It's not about saying no to Calvin Lehman's idea, of which we we knew about anyway. But uh, anyway, so so this is not rejecting your proposal. It's not rejecting. That's good because I think that's the answer. You're not rejecting. <laughs> okay, but look, please speak to the and address for the record. Luke Prank, 602 12th Street. The, it, my understanding is that if we had a decent collection system, that plant would work from being 